Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. In all three lectionary selections for Christmas, there are readings from the book of Isaiah. Each of the Isaiah readings focuses on the way light breaks in to the world of darkness. To appreciate the meaning of Christmas, we have to spiritually understand the way the light of Christ breaks into our felt and real darkness. The Gospel speaks of this great thing that happened in Bethlehem during a time of cultural darkness, of empire and death. A coming interpretation of the light of Christmas breaking into the darkness is that all darkness eventually goes away. And sometimes we Christians condemn darkness and give ourselves over to the dominance and soul desire of the light. In this way, we idolize the light and at all costs avoid the darkness as we plan our escape from the darkness back into the comfort of the light. In the middle of empire and death of babies under the direction of Herod, was the coming of another way of living in this world. The child Jesus leads us not to escape the darkness, but rather to stand at the center of the darkness and change the way you and I encounter the darkness. The simple act of lighting a candle in the darkness does not eliminate the darkness. It changes the way the darkness looks. The candle in the darkness changes the way you and I encounter darkness. The coming of Christ and Christmas changes the way we encounter the darkness of our personal lives and of our culture. A common but unspoken theology of Christmas is that the world's norm is light. In this theology, those who feel the blues at this time of year feel out of step with the season. These people, like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, feel like misfits, seasonal misfits, stuck in the darkness of their lives and feel condemned by the very light we celebrate. The dominant popular theology of Christmas is that the light breaks through the darkness and takes it over once and for all. But you know from my previous sermons throughout Advent that that is not Christian theology, but rather utopian theology. The dazzling lights of storefront windows and even our homemade Christmas trees makes it a bewildering search for us to find the true light of Christmas. A better theology of Christmas begins not with the dazzling lights of the season, as beautiful as they are, but in the darkness, when and where the light of Christ changes our encounter with the darkness. I came across these beautiful words this week. There's darkness inside of all of us. We all have it that part of our soul that is irreparably damaged by the very trials and tribulations of our life. We are what we are because of it, and perhaps in spite of it. But truly, the darkness is simply a place of the whole, a piece of the whole, where neither good nor evil, unless you or I make it so. The famous psychologist Carl Jung put it this way, how can I be substantial if I do not cast a shadow? I must have a dark side also if I am to be whole. One of the privileges of priestly ministry 
is that I have the opportunity to be with you in the many twists and turns of your life. I tend to know about your struggles, your questions, your doubts, your grief, your anger, and your sadness. I know because you trust me to tell me. In your telling me these things, we change in the telling. The encounter of our shared lives changes as the candle changes the darkness. The light from the candle does not make darkness extinct. The light from the candle changes the darkness. So too, the coming of Christ changes the way we encounter the darkness of our worlds. Friends, comfort us. Our family knows our history. But Christ knows us in a very different way than our friends or our family. And the church is at its very best when it enters the darkness with confidence that the light of Christ changes the darkness. In this defenseless place, we are most open to receive the Spirit of God and Christ Jesus at Christmas and every day of our lives. When the church fearlessly enters the darkness, we grow to the stature of Christ in the way his birth changed the world's encounter with darkness. Last night, 12 of us went Christmas caroling for the first time in the history of St. Francis. We had a great time together. The neighborhood, though, was very, very quiet at six o'clock last night. Lots of folks we precluded must have been out Christmas shopping, but few, a few were at home. In two places, the homes were with young children. In both homes, it was the children who heard our singing voices first. Then their parents followed behind them to meet us. The light of Christ comes through the arrival of a newborn baby who in 12 years will teach adults like you and me in a synagogue about the meaning of life. Children, like us, sometimes fear the darkness, but they also like to play in the darkness. Last night, children peered out very cautiously, but with great confidence, looked out the window of their homes to locate our singing voices, and in each case, their parents followed closely behind. The children led the adults. The newborn child Jesus calls us to be curious in the darkness rather than try to escape it at our first opportunity. The newborn child Jesus calls us to play in the darkness so that we discover new ways of being authentic. The newborn child Jesus leads us to a new encounter with the darkness later in our service. A well-cherished tradition of this church, we will turn out the lights of the church and light candles as we sing Silent Night. And as we sit in the darkness of this church, let us reflect on the way the light of Christ changes our encounter with the darkness. As we sit in the darkness of this church, let us renew our willingness to not urgently escape the darkness of our individual and cultural worlds, but rather commit to change ours and others' encounter to the darkness. The gift of Christmas is the way this child Jesus will change the world forever and the way we encounter darkness. We have been changed too by our baptism. Our baptism did not free us from struggle, questions, or doubts. Our baptism calls us to bear witness to the light at the center of the darkness, to more fully engage the struggles of our time, bringing justice, peace, and love. The good news of the Christmas Gospels, as is the good news in the Easter Gospels, holding our faith together 
by these two Christian feasts, we hear the central message of Christ. Be not afraid, for I am with you in the light and in the darkness. Christ Jesus is at our side. So we are able to freely enter and take on the greatest challenges of our lives in the life of the world. We are then free, like the child Jesus, to teach all another way to encounter the darkness. I pray for you and for me that whatever darkness is in our lives this night, that it will be changed by the coming of Christ into our lives and into the life of the world where you and I minister. In this way, we will truly celebrate Christmas every day. God bless you.